Okay, so the Gemini CLI tool came out about two days ago. I've been playing with it. It has some features and perks that are pretty cool. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the Gemini.md, the locally hosted SCDIO MCB servers, checkpointing. So let's go. First of all, MCP support, meaning locally hosted MCB servers will run finally with Gemini. Still waiting on you, chat. So finally, we're getting to use locally hosted MCB servers with Gemini without any crazy workarounds locally on our computer. Now, Gemini CLI is open source, and yes, it's pretty much a copy of Cloud Code. And it's not yet up to Cloud Code standards at all, but it has a feature that Cloud Code is missing, and that is checkpointing. And if you've been coding with AI, you know how important it is to be able to stop, revert, and go back to what was working. And yes, we can also do this with Git, but checkpointing makes it a lot easier because you just scroll up in the chat where the last time whatever you're working on was working, restore from there and keep working. And it's so important when you're vibe coding and working with AI, not to keep trying to go back and forth and fix a bug. If you realize it's not working, stop, go back and start over. And the biggest thing about Gemini CLI right now is it's free. Well, it's a lot more free than Claw or ChatGPT or Codex CLI. Google is giving up to 60 requests per minute and up to a thousand model requests per day using Gemini from your personal account. And this is something you just can't do with Claude or with ChatGPT. You don't have that option. So this is huge and this won't last forever, but I've already gotten a lot of good stuff done with it. And this only works on a personal account. So if you're trying to connect your workspace account, it's a bit different. And of course you could bring your own API keys if you want, you could bring Vertex AI. And the icing on the cake, of course, is Gemini's 1 million token context window. So we could get so much more done with this. So pairing up checkpointing and MCB servers and a lot of free usage, as well as a 1 million token context window, we have a lot we can play with right now, a lot we can get done. So I'm gonna show you how to set all this up. I don't wanna make a long video here. And the last thing I'm gonna say is I know a lot of people are scared of the command line. They're scared of the terminal. I know it looks scary, it's fine. Don't worry, it's okay. Get used to it. It is one of the most natural ways to work with AI. And if you want a graphic user interface, just open it up with an IDE, within a code editor, within cursor. So you have the terminal, but you could also see your files and see everything listed out. So take a step into the water. It's going to be fine. So this is the GitHub page. Gemini CLI looks just like Claude code. I like the colors a little bit better. Query and edit large code bases in Gemini's 1 million token context window. Generate new apps, PDFs, or sketches using Gemini's multimodal capabilities. Automate operational tasks. Use tools and MCP servers, including ImageGen, VO, and Lira and ground your queries in Google search. And that is also a pretty big deal. I mean, we've already been grounding our data now with various web tools like Brave, Tavili, Firecrawl, Bright Data, but having Google search built into it is also very powerful. Okay, so there's two ways to run it. You can either install it directly or you can just run it. And that's what we're gonna do today. So let's just click it here. So let's just copy this. Now I'm gonna open up an existing project. Let's open up a project that I just play around with a lot. The headache tracker new. Okay, so this is cursor. Down here is the terminal. This guy right on here, you just bring it up. Like it's the same terminal you see anywhere else. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna paste that in. And basically we're installing Gemini locally in this project. So I'm already logged in and I may have already used up all of my free tokens for the day. I did a lot. So we're just gonna change the auth method really easily. The first time you log in, you're gonna choose your system colors and you're gonna choose the way you log in via auth. I've already logged in. So I'm gonna change my auth method, especially because I already ran out of all my credits. I did a lot of work today, but let's just go here and press login with Google. It'll take you to your Google login page. I'm just gonna use a different account that I didn't use all my credits up on yet. Okay, so after you authenticate, you'll see this page, Gemini Code Assist, which is pretty much what Gemini CLI is based on. Don't have to worry about it right now. Now, let's go back to cursor or your terminal and you'll see that we're logged in. Now, if we type slash MCP, so we'll see that there's no MCP servers configured. And then we'll take us to a page on how to configure MCP, but I'm just gonna show you. And by the way, checkpointing is also not enabled by default. So I'm gonna show you how to do both of them. So since we're doing this on a project level, what we do is we create a new directory. So let's just do this, press new folder, dot Gemini. And then inside the folder, we're gonna create a new file called settings.json. So it's kind of similar to the way we were doing other things like cursor rules as well. So we're gonna add the checkpointing as well as MCP servers within this settings.json file. What we're gonna do now is install my favorite MCP server and that is sequential thinking. Okay, so here's a standard sequential thinking MCP server. All we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy this right here. We're gonna take this and we're gonna paste it into the settings.json. Now we're gonna save it and we're gonna exit Gemini CLI. Do slash quit. And just like Cloud Code, it tells us how much input tokens, output tokens, thought tokens we spent. 
which is nothing right now. Now, if we start it up again, we're just going to run the same command. Now we see using one MCB server. And if we press Control T, we'll see that the MCB server we have in here is sequential thinking. But how do we enable checkpointing? So we're going to do it as well within the settings.json file, which we already have open. So we already have this bracket open. Let's just go to the above MCB servers, center twice. So we're back on the Gemini CLI docs. We're just going to the checkpointing page, checkpointing.md, and you should read more about it. So we're just going to take this JSON as well. Just this part. We're going to copy it. If you didn't put MCB servers, take the whole thing. But since we already have MCB servers, we don't need it all. We're going to take it back to our settings.json, and we're just going to paste it in above MCB servers. And then all we want to do is add a comma. And now no red squiggly lines. We're good. And actually, we haven't turned it on yet. So just to show you, the way checkpointing works is once it's enabled, you do slash restore, and it'll show you all the checkpoints you can restore back to. Now, if we do it right now, because we haven't saved it yet, because you have to restart Gemini, you go back here and we type in slash restore. We'll say unknown command slash restore. Okay, great. So we're going to save this now, and we're going to leave Gemini again. Quit. Still all zeros. Love it. Start it up again. If we type slash restore, we see it's an option now. There's nothing to restore to, but I just want to show you. No restorable tool calls found. Okay, that's fine. So now we know the checkpoints are working. Well, one other thing I want to show you is it's a tip by Gemini. It says create a Gemini.md file. And that is very similar to our claw.md file or our agents.md file from Codex. In this project, I already have a claw.md file because I use this with cloud code. So let's work smarter, not harder. Let's tell Gemini to duplicate the cloud.md file. So we're just going to do this one, see how it works. Create a Gemini.md file by duplicating the cloud.md file naming it as Gemini.md and replacing all mentions of Claude to Gemini. And this file is just like your cursor rules. It pretty much gives instructions to Gemini. And just like Claude, you can make multiple files and you can save memories to it. It's really cool. Will we allow this change? Okay, so I've created the Gemini.md file. If you look at Claude.md, 186 lines. Let's just use that as a barometer. Let's open Gemini. And it is also 186 lines. And if we look up here, it's Gemini.md. This file provides guidance to Gemini code, Google Cloud AI slash code. Okay, so it, did, so it didn't get it perfectly, but you got the point. It pretty much took all the context from the cloud.md file and gave it to Gemini. So whenever Gemini wants to work, it's able to look at it. And you could change this all the time. Okay, so just to show you now, if we type slash restore, now we'll see one restore point. So the way it works is it makes a shadow git commit on every turn. When you approve a tool that modifies the file system, the CLI automatically creates a checkpoint. This checkpoint includes a git snapshot. A commit is made in a special shadow git repository. And to be honest, there are so many features for Gemini CLI. There's so much to play with. I recommend looking at the documentation, but I think in this video, I gave you enough to get started. So yeah, I just want to show you guys how to get started with Gemini CLI. I think it's really cool. I think you guys should play with it while it's still free. I'll tell you that I got some good work done with it with just sequential thinking and the built-in Google search. I didn't even connect Brave Search or Tavili or Context 7. It was able to search for the latest documentation for me and get it in one shot. Obviously, there's still a lot of features missing here and it's just the beginning, but that 1 million token context window, getting MCP support with Gemini and getting checkpoints into a CLI tool, I think is a step forward. And now we have the Cloud MD and the Gemini MD and the Agents MD, and we can just go back and forth between all the different frontier agentic coding CLI tools when we run out of tokens or run out of usage limits, whatever. So happy coding. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.